Okay, so um, welcome everybody. My name is Felix Litschauer. I'm Global Health Advisor at Medico International, which is a human rights and emergency relief organization based in Frankfurt, Germany. And I have the honor of moderating this webinar on the international recruitment of healthcare workers today during the Equal Care Day Festival. And before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we will first hear a short input from each of the three speakers. And afterwards, we will have the opportunity for everybody of uh, you in the audience for your questions and comments. And you can post these questions um, every time in the chat. The webinar is scheduled for exactly 55 minutes and we have to finish very punctually because there's a tight program as the organizers told me and last but not least um, we want you to know that this webinar is going to be recorded okay let's get started um i said i'm sitting here for medico international but i also have a second head on which is namely as a member of the german platform for global health the pgg in short which is an association of actors from academia, social organizations, trade unions, activists, and NGOs who came together in 2015 under the motto, Global Health Starts at Home, which means in a globalized world, health, policy, economic developments cannot be viewed solely from a national perspective and connections must be made. And this applies in particular to the unequal dis distribution of care work and healthcare work in particular. And this can only be analyzed by taking into account a global perspective. And there is hardly any other area of health policy where global interrelationships and thus also global power imbalances crystallize to such an extent. And therefore, today we will be talking about global care chains. Germany has been a real champion in advertising migration of healthcare workers, and this has, had, has led to the German government going in a on a publicity tour in countries such as Kosovo, Ghana, or Brazil in the last couple of years to attract healthcare professionals for the German healthcare Champion system. Champion in advertising the migration they have in their luggage is a benefit just for everyone. The care workers in terms of earnings and legal migration opportunities, the countries of origin in terms of remittances and training partnerships, and of course for Germany as labor force. And this sounds like a win for everybody, right? And well, we want to take a closer look now at what lies behind these rosy promises. And I'm delighted that we are able to discuss this issue today with um, three real experts on the topic. Um, first, I want to introduce to you Christa Wichterich. She is a feminist sociologist specialized in gender and development. And Christa, you have been have uh, quite an impressive career um, and you've been, worked as a professor for gender politics in Germany, Austria and Switzerland and furthermore as a journalist and you were based as foreign correspondent in Nairobi, Kenya and presently in University of Kassel you organize a comparative research in Ghana and India on recruitment and out migration of nurses from India and Ghana. And your recent publication together with Maya John was the book, Who Cares on Health Workers in India and Indian Health Workers Abroad. Santosh Mahindraka, you are a nurse by profession and at the same time you have a doctor in public health and your thesis was on the political analysis of human labor in the health care sector. And for more than 10 years, you have been active in various progressive healthcare organizations such as the People's Health Movement, and you have been fighting for a structural improvement of healthcare systems, especially in the area of working condi conditions for nurses. And since 2018, you have been working as a nurse in a state hospital in North Rhine-Westphalia in Germany. And then we have Karen Spangrebs. You are a medical doctor by profession. You were 
active for a long time at the Mediboro in Hamburg, which does medical aid for people without insurance. And you work for the Association of Democratic Doctors, VDA. So we have brought together a wealth of expertise today, and I'm looking forward to the discussion with you. Let's start with Krista. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Felix. Um, yeah, let me start by stressing that care, healthcare, is not only a question of the gender division of labor and gendered inequalities, but is increasingly becoming a question of the international division of labor and global inequalities. Shortage of skilled labor in the healthcare sector, Fachkräftemangel, is a political buzzword, which has caused recruitment programs of nurses and doctors from abroad. Import of labor, so-called global care chains, seems to be the solution to our problem of shortage and of the crisis in social reproduction. Along with the narrative, we need them, a narrative we help them is constructed. If we look at a global care chain with a justice perspective, we have to take into account the complexity of these care chains and map the different interests and actors involved in the migration of nurses. A mapping of interests in migration of skilled nurses shows governments in the South become labor brokers and use the export of cheap care workers as a development strategy, which earns them foreign currency through remittances and which is supposed to reduce problems of un- and underemployment and poverty in their countries. Governments, municipalities and hospitals in the global north launch recruitment programs which use migrant healthcare labor to restructure their social reproduction system and manage the crisis with the help of a spatial fix at low costs. Furthermore, private training institutions are booming and commercial agencies in sending and receiving countries make money by facilitating the recruitment and placement. The key actor, the nurse, has a right to mobility and often a desire to migrate due to push and pull factors and personal interests. Many decide to escape the low wages and often appalling working conditions in their home country and get into debt due to the high fees they have to pay to training institutions and placement agencies. Their decision is informed by an economy of hope to earn more money, pay back debt and support their family back home, get more respect as professionals and to achieve a higher standard of living. This complex scenario of migration-oriented interests is confronted with a dramatic shortage of healthcare staff in most of the sending countries. It is well known that each care chain is gain and drain. At the same time, care, brain and skill drain and gain. Each migrant care worker is missing in her and his home country and household. The transnationalization of healthcare work got increasingly normalized, but not regulated. Therefore, as a means of regulation, in 2010, the WHO published a code for the recruitment of healthcare workers with a list of countries which suffer from a critical shortage of health personnel and therefore should be spared from recruitment. The notion of fair and ethical recruitment was coined. However, the code is not binding, but voluntary. A revised Less comprehensive list was published by the WHO in December 2021. For example, India was on the first list, but didn't appear in the revised list. Immediately after the revision of the WHO recruitment code, the German state entered into a contract with the South Indian state of Kerala. Kerala, where most of the Indian nurses are trained, was included in the Triple Win program of Germany. This program was already launched in 2013 by the German state to solve its problem of shortage of nurses. 
It facilitates the recruitment of nurses by the Society for International Cooperation, GITS, and the German Federal Employment Agency, Bundesagentur für Arbeit, presently in 10 countries, Vietnam, Tunisia, Philippines, Bosnia and Herzegovina, India, Indonesia, Mexico, Brazil, and Colombia. The triple win formula assumes equal opportunities and gains. However, in the context of global inequality, it has three major effects which reproduce inequalities and which we have to analyze when speaking about equal care. Firstly, in continuation of the Gastarbeiter, the guest worker model of the 1960s, workers, human resources are imported to Germany from less wealthy countries and regions to drive the German economy, the growth model, and now to support the ailing social reproduction system. They are welcomed as skilled and as cheap labor. In a neo-colonial way, a care deficit is created in the home country of the migrant worker to fill the care gap in Germany. While every day and structural racism is still prevailing and healthcare is traded as a commodity in a global market of migration, nurses from the global south subsidize our health system. Secondly, countries in the global south and the Balkan states suffer from an appalling shortage of healthcare workers. During the COVID-19 pandemic in many countries of the Global South, due to, due to the lack of healthcare staff, patients could not be treated in hospitals and lost their life. However, after the pandemic, OECD countries intensified their recruitment and care extraction strategies vis-a-vis -vis the Global South, often assuming a surplus of nurses who could not find a job. This deepens the conflict of rights between the collective right to health in each and every country and the individual right to migrate. Thirdly, as the healthcare personnel should be skilled, the pattern of a spatial gap between skill training and skill usage is reaffirmed. Due to privatization of nursing training, the costs of education are shifted to the individuals and their families who often accum accumulate a considerable debt burden. Simultaneously, recruiting states facilitate easier immigration, for example, Germany with a new Skilled Immigration Act. <clears throat> However, within the past 10 years, less than 5,000 nurses were recruited in the frame of the triple win program and bilateral agreements with Germany. Another thousand nurses came additionally on an individual basis. However, some left Germany after some time being disappointed about the problems and hindrances created systematically by the German administration, by stressful working conditions and a heavy workload caused by the neoliberal management in hospitals and by the prevailing racism. When we talk about care equality, we have to talk about decent work and fair payment and about fair and ethical recruitment. But we have to talk as well about the underlying neo-colonial model of solving our shortage problem at the costs of others. At the same time, we know that global care chains and migrant healthcare workers cannot cause a structural change of our health and social reproduction system. I hope we can discuss this further in our Q&A session after the presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Krista, for this very thought-provoking political analysis of how global care chains work and, and what ratios lie behind it and maybe um, what also what problems we have to talk about here in Germany. We, we are going to hear about that um, later from Karen. But first, I want to bring 
Santosh Mahindra Ka um, into play. Santosh um, as a nurse and as um, also a scientist who um, did a lot of theoretical work on the migration of nurses. Um, yeah, let me ask you, uh, as, as I understood, Krista, uh, nurses and doctors from abroad are obviously ending up in areas of work that, that many colleagues in in Germany have already left in frustration and where is a, a shortage of stuff. And from your perspective as a long-term health activist and, and from the experience of a migrant nurse, what problems does this lead to for the migrant nurses then? Hi, uh, could you hear me? Yeah. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody. First of all, those who are here in Germany, uh, greetings of the day wherever you are. So thanks for inviting this. As uh, Felix uh, rightly said, I am since five years at my, here in Germany from 2018, working as a nurse, which I started my career here as a nursing assistant, did an anarchenum, then the last three years I am a registered nurse in one of the public hospitals. Uh, thanks, uh, Krista, for uh, putting a hint, background very firmly that it's a new public health management which is based on the neoliberal uh, thought process, theoretical framework, which comes out where we say globalization, privatization, and liberalization, which we come in. And you correctly said the privatization of the nursing institutions in the in uh, like source countries, like for example, we as I am from India, uh, which is very predominant. In uh, to just blick data in 2002, there were only 87 or 89 colleges. After five years, it has become 200 or 300 times more. It is 1,500, and currently there are 4,000 nursing institutions in India. So all 99 percent of them are all private. So let us. Uh, with that, I'll come to the existing. Uh, health system issues in the Germany and as a migrant health worker, what are our challenges and how do they support the health system, which is, uh, let me say, a uh, a lingering health system and how do they support and what are their issues and challenges. So let me start. As we all know, nurses shortage is existing in Germany and other developing countries. But by the way, we also have a high demand of an aging population where need, uh, need, they have more basic needs are increasing and the diseases are also increasing day by day, which are, uh, let me say, uh, if, if you take the cancer rates in Germany, it's increasing so many uh, diseases there. Now, added to it, let us see uh, within the, uh, there are a lot of stress, lesser number of wor workers and does the existing nurses in the Germany, whatever numbers they are now, how many of them are able to work 100% work? I mean that 38 to 39 hours per week. How many of them are there? Are they really not able to work? Or what are the reasons for them? Maybe family reasons. Uh, what are the re we need to uh, look at it? Second one is, the now nursing institute. If you want, don't want to depend upon the migrating uh, like uh, other country nurses. We want to depend for our own. Now in the Germany itself, the nursing students dropout rate is around forty percent. Why is it that happening? So with that, I'll uh, uh, my uh, ex what I am going to narrate in the next five six minutes is the uh, a migrant health workers issue as personal experience and also experience of nurses who did anarchenum with me and who were working with me and in my circle. So let me specify there are two kinds of uh, migration happens in Germany, as Krista said, within European countries and non-European countries. Within European countries, if you have a registered certificate some other parts of EU, you just need a language certificate, which is B1 or B2 in different states. It's a state variant. Second one is non-German countries, if they come from other part of it. 
and this is majorly the uh, germany is dependent currently on only international migrant of uh, migration so here the foreign nurses who come from the non european countries has to go through a adaptation course which is called as anerken okay the first issue is anerken standardization of anerken the time span which needs uh, to complete this anerken and what are the pays they are Uh, getting during anerkenu and after doing the anerkenu when they do the registered registered nurse they will start from the scratch even though i have a 10 years experience in india that is not considered and i will start with the zero so i said non standardization what does it mean is i had a one of the uh, co uh, student with me during anerkenu they both are coming from same country same batchmates did the same bachelor course one had only 230 or 40 hours of exp uh, anerkenu to be done and other had 800 how could a same education same experience same country have such a difference that's non standardization what i mean so such kind of uh, that's a uh, one uh, there are also issues related to who will pay that's a secondary let us take it second issue which i want to highlight is uh, i said anerkenu and related to anerkenu and payment is obviously there and when you see this non european migrant nurses coming from they have a language barrier because they know mother tongue language when you are not able to communicate properly in nursing field health field you will lose a lot of stuff you you will not be perform you to 100% you lot a lot of stress already the existing shortage of nurses of the situation over that you have to think of your language what you are talking and within the health system we have multiple health workers coming from different parts of the world not only germans they have different accent so we have also need to understand the different accent that's pressure sense now let me ask a question will a migrant non european health worker whose mother tongue is not german german language will he or she able to understand all the laws of uh, labor laws is a question so with that i will uh, go to second third part and come back again to some of the solutions what we have so second i said language therefore he he or she doesn't have a, much information and how to claim for them who will support them do we have existing support system within the Uh, this triple win or the at arbeit geber or the health institutions where i work do they have a support for a non german speaking person to understand the german law is it there no so uh, therefore they are not able to no they don't know the rights and they can't claim for them that's it now come to the unionization the union in the germany are where they are they have their own unions the issue here is uh, non uh, the uh, migrant nurses have to pay uh, some fees for the unions and that they feel, feel the high amount that's why they may, they will not agree the question mark is are the verdi or uh, any other unions are, are approaching the migrant nurses is also a question therefore my next issue is related to acceptance of non uh, uh, non german nurses from the german the existing health workers themselves is the second question so it is very important to understand does the existing health health workforce are ready to accept these migrant health workers because they are replacing their work number one number two they are guest workers they are, they will die to do 100% 120% to earn more money it will be it will be impacted on the rights of the health workers who are already existing the healthcare system that's the second challenge we have third is uh, what is the culture which i bring from i have a work culture from india which is always i have superior who is next to me who will support and uh, who will guide me when you come to germany it's a more individualistic when you are nurse and you are responsible you do it whatever you want you are registered nurse do it that happen I me mean, i'm not telling that is right <coughs>
Okay, we'll just wait a second until Santos um, got better. Are you, are you feeling okay, yeah. Santos? So question comes here is, we may not have always a safe system, but do we have a standard system to support the, <clears throat> understand the working culture here and adjust it? With that, I come to some of the <clears throat> Major issues. I'll tell only macro level. I leave the which if that's solved, we can also resolve the other issues. Now, for example, there is a bilateral agreement between the India and Germany. There's a Kerala state in 2022. During the bilateral agreement, why can't they go in a step further and say, India, this is the standard nursing education program in India, which is BS Bachelor's of Nursing of GNM. And when you're asking for Indian nurses to come, you ask also for experience, which is there in the most of the posters. So they should match the adaptation course. Say, if you, it's, it's there in Australia, for example, any abroad nurse has to go three months of adaptation course mandate. It is same for everyone. So this bilateral agreement could be done at that level. This adaptation course that could be solved. Second is water. For example, Ireland has done a recently a better step and say that when the migrant nurse come from the, uh, their country, they can write the examination directly within the week of uh, that adaptation course exam. Once they qualify, the Nursing Council of Ireland will say what is the expected salary for that person, for the migrant nurse, and what are his uh, rights. It will be mentioned. That's the second one. So these are the two examples which I'm just mentioning as a sol solution. Third one will be, and we come to it, in Germany, my experience, my reading says that we do not have any structural setup. Like, for example, if you take a UK, which is one of the best system called to be, we, you have a floor, floor nurse who is working in the station. After every floor nurse, there is a nursing uh, manager who looks after Thereafter, you have floor manager, they have, you have nursing educator cadre family, who is not only taking care of students, but a migrant workers and they do quarterly evaluations. So such type of system, if it exists in the organogram, what we call nursing organogram, most of the public health sector of the countries have, if we have that, that then the nurse who is coming from migrant has a no, okay. These are the organogram existing. I can catch hold of this person asking. So with these two, three uh, solutions and what are the issues I said, added to that, we have an issue of, uh, uh, it's not racism, which is we have, we have to face some issues being a different color, not speaking good language. I understand a patient is sick, lying on a bed with a pain. If I'm not able to understand him, at that point, he will spoil. He will be have tensions in between. That's a very well understood. So such issues we'll face. I think the solution we could find it, but it should come from the top. Uh, it's a larger understanding. Understanding, I think. Thank you. Over to. Thank you very much, Santosh, for yes, very impressively showing how how Germany is at the same time very dependent on migrant work in the healthcare sector and on the other hand um, kind of leaving um, healthcare workers from abroad uh, alone with a whole bunch of problems um, uh, on a structural level but also on a personal level um, which um, has to be addressed um, and we will now um, hear um, from Karen um, what could be done about it. Um, and Karen, uh, just a bit an introductory question for you. Um, when, when I talk with um, um, people and also politicians about um, about this issue of migrant health care, in Germany, um, often they bring into play the um, the argument of the demographic change and that recruitment is just presented as a necessary solution. And at the same time, studies speak of half a million trained 
carers who do not work in their profession because of the bad working conditions. So, so how can this discrepancy be explained? What, what to do about it? Yes, uh, thank you, Felix. Uh, also, thank you, Krista and Santosh, for uh, already uh, giving lots of informations and um, yeah, questioning this narrative about um, the existing narratives about care and health workers' migration. Um, yeah, I think this point you made, uh, Felix, this contradiction is, is, is a key point in this um, question. And I think this is also why we have to question this narrative that um, health care and health workers uh, recruitment um, will be the solutions to our problems um, in Germany. Um, so I want to focus now um, exactly on this, on the connection between um, health workers and health systems uh, and conclude with um, a short presentation of our um, position paper of the German platform for global health. I will try to stay in time so we can have <laughs> time to discuss afterwards. So um, as you said, it's already, it's definitely true that there is a shortage of uh, nurses in German hospitals at the moment. It's, uh, it's a dramatic shortage, I would say, not only nurses, but especially of nurses. Um, but I think instead of claiming that the international recruitment can be the only solutions, we really have to um, look at the root causes of this um, shortages. And it's not so difficult to, um, to analyze them, actually. So um, during the last uh, 20 years, the implementation of the DRG hospital financing uh, system and the um, following profit orientation and economization of healthcare in Germany, um, we could experience a um, vicious circle um, of deteriorating working conditions with increasing work density and then health workers quitting their jobs, um, which led to an even higher uh, work density for the ones that uh, stayed in the healthcare system. In the same time, um, we experienced a politicization of health workers and also um, in the last years, um, an increase of unionization and industrial actions um, of hospital workers, um, mainly nurses, um, which, who didn't only strike for higher salaries, but primarily for lower work densities and um, especially for mandatory nurse to patient ratios. Um, which they also succeeded in many um, hospitals. So I think uh, we can, it's very good idea to just listen to their claims uh, if we want to tackle uh, health workers shortages in Germany. Uh, you already mentioned this um, study, Ich pflege wieder wenn, I think it's a very important study. And um, when we talk about this issue, it was published 2022 and it showed that there's um, currently a big unused potential of um, nurses in elderly care and in long-term care in Germany. It's 300,000 to 600,000 um, nurses who could work uh, in their jobs and who would be willing to work in their jobs again if the working conditions would improve. So, um, yeah, we know that um, health professionals are very um, essential for good health care. There are studies who show that the health outcomes of populations depend highly on the numbers of health workers available. And of course, um, there's also a connection to the demographic change, but um, health workers are not just numbers. Um, they can only do their jobs if they find good working conditions, um, which allow them to do their jobs. And so they need sufficient payment. They need good education, training, equipment, and also time to care for their patients. Therefore, health workers highly rely on functioning health systems. And um, that's why um, we would state that this global health workforce crisis is highly connected to an underlying uh, health system crisis that we have to, to tackle. Um, I think it's interesting to see that the conditions under which healthcare professionals suffer, they are often quite uh, similar in different countries, although of course on different levels. But uh, in many countries, um, health workers uh, say that they suffer from low salaries, exhausting work density, um, and it either leads them to quit their jobs and to search for other jobs in different sectors, for example, in Germany, or to search for jobs in another country, which they do in uh, lower and middle income countries more often. 
So um, we can see that health workers exhaustion and health workers uh, migration are often linked. Um, and in both cases, it leads to um, shortages that are only relocated between different countries through the recruitment. Um, and of course, following existing economic and power imbalances that Krista already uh, told about. And so it leaves um, the populations in low income countries in the end um, behind without um, health workers. So following all this, um, we at the Association of Democratic Doctors, but also the German Platform for Global Health, we state that the recruitment cannot be the solutions. Um, health workers, wherever they are trained, they all need uh, strong health systems to do their jobs. So it's um, it's it's uh, yeah, it's both the in Germany trained um, health workers, but also the foreign trained health workers that need good working conditions. So it's therefore also very important for us to keep an eye um, on where foreign trained health professionals uh, are in danger of being exploited because of their higher vulnerability. So um, as Santosh already uh, talked about, in the past there were examples like a report in two, uh, 2020, um, which showed that um, private recruitment agencies um, try to pass high costs on um, migrating professionals, but also um, the German, the strict German uh, residence law um, the difficulties with getting diplomas recognized, uh, as Santosh told us, um, but also lack of language skills or lack of um, information and sufficient uh, knowledge of labor laws um, really puts um, foreign trained health workers in danger um, of facing even worse working conditions than their German trained colleagues. So, um, because of all that, <laughs> um, we, and also because of the currency of the topic, um, we as the German Platform for Global Health, we um, published a position paper last year um, with five key demands. Um, the first is instead of supporting existing structures by enticing them away, structural solutions are needed for the crisis of the German health system. So um, it's again, how I, like I said, health workers need health systems. So we would um, argue for non-profit, welfare-oriented public health systems that provide good working conditions, uh, but also good care for the patients. The second um, key demand is that a sustainable health personal policy must be established as an essential element of the WHO code of practice that Krista already mentioned. So um, yeah, we, we need um, measurements that uh, make health and care professions more attractive. For example, um, by consequently implementing um, worker to patient ratios or yeah. there's lots of ideas. Uh, you, you can listen to the hospital movements and to the striking health workers to, to get ideas and uh, they have to be um, implemented. Um, third, uh, recruitment must lead to good working conditions. Um, that's why we argue for, for binding onboarding concepts um, in hospitals. For example, free in service um, language courses for every foreign trained health worker. Um, and also, the, the employers have to take the responsibility to ensure the quick recognition process for the diplomas. Um, and we also abolish for uh, argue for the abolishment um, of the linking of the residence permit um, to the employment with one certain employer because it yeah it results in dependencies. Um, the fourth um, key demand is that recruitment must be fair for health workers as fair as possible. So we also urge the German government to finally sign the. Um, International Labour Organizations Convention 181 on private employment agencies um, and on implementing binding standards for recruitment processes, uh, including also information on um, rights and on counseling options, for example, with unions. Um, and the last key demand is that recruitment must be fair for the countries of origin. I would say as fair as possible, um, given the underlying neo-colonial model Krista talked about. But uh, we argue that the recruitment at least only takes place within bilateral agreements 
and these bilateral agreements uh, have to really follow this WHO code of practice. So yes, like as a um, wrap up, I would say, instead of competing over a uh, global health workforce, um, we need to analyze the underlying root causes of the shortages, and we have to fight also in international solidarity for our health systems. Great, thank you, Karen, um, for putting into play this whole um, demands that are already developed by organizations such as VDA and the Trim Platform for um, Global Health. And what I find um, important to stress is that there is a WHO code of practice that Germany adopted, which calls for sustain sustainable health workforce policies and um, the improvement of healthcare systems in the recipient countries, um, which which obviously does not happen, and uh, um, and this is something I think um, is always worth to mention. Um, so now we got roughly yeah, let's say 10, 12 minutes left, and um, as far as I can see, we have um, at least one um, question from the audience I, I want to um, um, pose to you um, about, um, well, um, it is about the positive or um, supposedly positive impacts of the recruitment of healthcare workers. Maybe, um, Krista, you can um, outline that a bit. What, what do countries that recruit healthcare workers um, argue uh, about um, when they say uh, there is a positive impact um, uh, on the countries of origin? Um, what are what are the arguments again, and why um, do we say these are not right? Yes, um, the key argument is a financial one, and it is promoted very much, for example, by the World Bank uh, and the International Organization of Migration, that the remittances sent home uh, to the home country can help the home country in development. And this is a, um, a hope which is uh, very much uh, taken up by the sending states. They want to, to use, uh, use the foreign currency to, for development. At least they, uh, they announce this. But what we have seen in countries like the Philippines, who uh, a country which was one of the pioneers uh, in uh, out-migration, of healthcare and uh, healthcare workers and, for example, domestic workers, uh, this remittances didn't uh, show in the development of the healthcare sector of the country. And uh, even after decades, the same uh, motivation for migration is repeated again and again. And uh, Additionally, for the sending country, they get, let me uh, say it clearly, they get rid of labor force. They think that they have too much labor force and not enough jobs to offer to them. And uh, so it's good to send this labor force uh, abroad and it earns money there and sends the money back. And the third argument, which comes up again and again, is if these migrant labors return after some time, after some years, to their countries, they have learned a lot in, for example, Germany, and acquired skills in Germany, and ten, for, uh, in particular about technology, medical technology, and they can take this a uh, home, what is called brain gain. And then the 
uh, home country and the health system in the country would ben benefit once again. So there's a number of reasons which um, more recently have been uh, yeah, added on. For example, the argument, there is a surplus of nurses in the sending countries. They get uh, good training there and they don't get jobs there. But this, that they don't get good jobs in the home countries is of course uh, caused by the very bad health systems there and the low health budgets in these countries, for example, India. So we see that there are many causes for the shortage of uh, labor force here and in the sending countries. And uh, yes, sending labor force from one to another country is not a solution because we have uh, structures in the health system which had to be changed. Thank you very much, Krista. We have a second question. Um, I think it's uh, a bit for Santos and a bit for you. Uh, maybe Santos can come first and then um, um, and then you, Krista. Um, so um, there are bilateral agreements, um, as the person who asks that um, uh, heard, and those agreements um, are, are binding for the placement agencies who, um, like there are certain quotas in these agreements, and the placement agencies have to adhere to these quotas. However, there are um, many private placement agencies um, from Germany recruiting staff outside these political agreements, um, which seems to cause a lot of problems. Can you confirm this? Santos first and then um, Christa second. Santos, you are muted. Sorry. Uh, that's absolutely correct. When Krista presented, she saw, told the number of the nurses recruited through the triple win. In last year, if you see the number of the nurses who were migrated, now this question comes here, migration only within the Europe or non-Europe. That's also a question. For example, triple win, which we say, it has only 12 countries mentioned, right? So there are also, within the EU, there are a lot of uh, Albania, uh, any other, uh, Georgia, there are many countries where nurses are transferred. That's apps, uh, private uh, players are involved, not only in the country, EU or other, but in the countries where the bilateral agreements are there, there are also existing private players play the game. That's not true. And uh, if uh, the uh, anyone who types uh, just uh, go to any of the your search engine and type uh, German uh, nurses vacancy in India, posters in India, you'll find enormous number of the proof which agency what does. That's true. Okay. Um, Krista, do you want to add on this? Yes, I would agree as well. And I know about uh, cases where German Bundesländer lender, uh, gave assignments to uh, private uh, agencies to recruit uh, health personnel. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another question, question with it, which is, um, we often hear that there are way too many healthcare professionals in other countries. So it's kind of a relief for these countries um, that um, those uh, unemployed um, professionals come to Germany. Um, what can we say about this? Maybe Karen. Um, yes, um, as Krista already also talked about it, um, I think, yeah, if you look at it, um, the, the ratio um, population nurses to population or health workers to population in Germany is, is really high um, uh, compared to, to many of these countries. Um, 
where we recruit um, health workers from. And even um, yeah, in examples where, where this uh, ratio is much higher in Germany, and the German government sometimes says that ah, they, they have uh, um, unemployed um, health workers, so it's a relief um, that they can come to Germany. So I think uh, yeah we have to we have to ask um, why is are there under unemployed health workers and uh, yeah often it's because the health system is not financed um, well or is underfinanced so it's also a, um, a consequence of neoliberal and austerity measurements um, that yeah health workers get unemployed. Um, and of course, for these individual health workers, it's good to find a job in Germany, but um, for the for the health system of the country of origin and for the health of the population, it's very bad. So yeah, we could also see it, um, for example, in the Euro crisis um, for some years, um, there were many um, nurses and doctors from um, Greece and um, Spain um, recruited to Germany because the health systems in these countries were suffering um, under austerity measurements, sometimes also um, yeah, implemented also uh, or um, by the German government or also, um, how do you say, <laughs> um, yeah, urged for by the German government. And um, yeah, these people came to Germany because they were unemployed, but their health systems were suffering under the shortages. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, we uh, slightly have to uh, come to an end as uh, as I look at the time. Um, I think uh, the three of you very, very good ga um, gave us an image of the issues healthcare workers face in Germany and um, how the broader structural um, um, problems are behind global care chains. Um, we have to talk about this further and we are going to do um, so this will not be the last topic. Um, I just got uh, um, a note by my colleague from Vemos uh, um, which um, is another um, NGO working in um, in health um, in uh, uh, in the Netherlands, um, and they are um, uh, also giving some um, webinars um, in a, in the near future, um, um, especially on the WHO Code of Practice. So get in contact with them if you are more interested in, in this topic. Um, and yes, I want to say thank you to. Um, Krista to Karen and Santosh for for your contributions and and your willingness to to bring forward this um, important topic and also I want to say thank you to the organizing committee of the Equal Care Day. Um, please feel free to contact us if you're interested in a further dialogue and um, yes, just keep up the thought provoking insights at Equal Care Day and. We see you soon. Goodbye.